Alright folks, welcome back to another budget gem or budget bust. Today I have got a very highly requested amplifier and possibly a very controversial amplifier at the same time. This is the Rockville DB55. Now, you might be saying, why controversial? Well, because if you look at the comments right below here, uh, if you're uh, getting past the first hour of the normal comments, uh, you're going to see a bunch of them that say, Rockville's trash, Rockville blows, Rockville sucks, look at the e EXO video, look at that thing catch fire. All right, it was the K9 that, that didn't do well, folks. Uh, the amplifiers have all done well on dyno tests. Uh, the DB16 maybe got a little shaky, but still was able to find 2,000 watts RMS at 2 ohms, even though it was dynamic. So, beyond that, um, this amp from Rockville comes in with a price of $159 to $175, depending on the current pricing. Pricing is always subject to change. Um, it does have the weird funky ratings, which is the CEA, the RMS, and the peak numbers, which really kind of is stupid because these are the only numbers that are actually going to be accurate. These are the CEA. Um, and I know some of you out there are being like, well, CEA is a bunch of crap. All right, get over it again. Even if it's at four ohms, at least it's one standard that, you know, they should be trying to achieve, okay? Um, so, <laughs> with that being said, uh, we're gonna unbox this amp here, and we're gonna amp dyno it, and we're gonna see just how much power this amp actually produces, and we are gonna later find out how many Rockville Sucks comments are gonna be down below, even though I'm in the camp that the amps have been pretty good. So, we're going to see if this amp lives in the pretty good world um, that the ones before it I've tested have. Alright, so let's jump into it and let's get this bad boy unboxed. Alright, opening her up. Alright, first thing we are greeted with here is our burst sheet. And our friend Lucas is back. Um, it does look like these have been printed on there now, though, so that's good. It's not quite a full-on facsimile. Uh, they're still sticking these stickers on here for the uh, serial number, so that's still kind of a fail. And Lucas must test everything, because every amp I've gotten, Lucas, which is a very Chinese name, uh, has tested, quote-unquote, every single amp that is made its way to me. Likelihood of that happening, uh, very slim to not possible. Um, got your Rockville owner's manual here. Specs for it, you were not going to be able to see it. Maybe I'll put it up at some point in the video. But we want the CEA numbers. All the other numbers are full of shit, so we're not going to worry about those. And it is rated at 2 ohms, 120 watts by 4, and 500 watts by 1 at 1% THD. 4 ohms, which probably most of you will be running your highs on, uh, will be the 4 ohms, and that's 80 watts by 4, and uh, 300 watts by 1 on the sub-channel. Um, we've got uh, frequency response, 15 hertz to 35 kilohertz. Single, no single noise ratio is 90 dB. Dampening factor is greater than 100 at 100 hertz. And uh, this amp is 18.6 inches long. So, she's a big boy. Uh, let's see. Get your warranty card there too. Some hardware. I do like that they give you three uh, of the spare fuses. Sometimes they only include one. Um, if they include any spare fuses at all. Um, so, I mean, chances are if you're gonna blow one of the fuses on the amp, you're gonna blow all three. So, kinda handy. It does have your Allen keys and four screws as well. And, I just dropped the screw out of there. Last but not least, dun -da -da -da. one 
Rockville DB55 amplifier. Let me move this box out of the way so you can look at all its $159 glory. I have no idea where to put this box now. Uh, so anyway, we have our blue Rockville LEDs here. We do have the brushed black aluminum look. Heat sink is very, very nicely constructed. This doesn't feel flimsy. I'm pretty sure I can stand on this and it's not going to go anywhere. I don't recommend that though. Um, I don't love the end caps. They're kind of plasticky, but I've seen worse. Looking at you on the worse for end caps, Orion. Um, but I mean, again, it's a it's a pretty attractive amplifier. Uh, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to rock this in my vehicle um, if this was the power requirements I was looking for. Um, okay, let's check out the sides of the amp. Along this side of the amplifier, we find our power ground and uh, remote inputs, as well as all of our speaker output terminals. Uh, we also have three 40 amp fuses here for a total of 120 amps. Uh, these power and grounds are four gauge, and these, they say they're eight gauge, but I think they're more like 10 to 12. Um, for all five channels. Uh, and that is the same thing here for the uh, remote input as well. Along this side of the amplifier, we have all of our RCA inputs and our uh, speaker settings and levels and crossovers and power and protect lights and remote base knob, etc. cetera. Um, so let's jump into the nitty gritty of what is what. Uh, right here, probably the most important thing, this is your input mode. Um, this allows you to select from two channels, four channels, and five channels of input. Um, of course, this is our remote, which only will control the subwoofer channel. Um, this is for channel five, this whole section right here. Um, this is your base equalizer, otherwise known as your base boost. Leave that off. Um, you have your subsonic filter, which is nice that on a five channel, you have a subsonic filter, not a lot of them do. Uh, we have our low pass filter right here. And of course our gain for channel five as well. Now, mind you, even if you use two channel mode here, you are gonna have to set the gain for all five channels. Um, well, not all five independently, but channels one and two, three and four, and channel five. Uh, you can't just go up to channel 1 and 2, set the gain, and you think it's done for all of them. Um, and as I said here, this is channel 3 and 4. Uh, channel 3 and 4 also has a low-pass filter as well, in case you wanted to bridge this one. Um, you have your choice between a low-pass filter, full range, and high-pass. Uh, high-pass can also act as your subsonic filter, because you can go uh, all the way down to... 15 hertz and raise that up as well uh, and that'll go all the way to 4 kilohertz um, and of course you have your gain right there gain for channel 1 and 2 it only has a high pass filter on this channel and you can either choose full range or high pass filter mode okay let's check out the guts and the one thing that's very noticeable to me right off the bat is you can see the difference in topology um, from the class D section, which is right here, and the class AB section that is right here. Um, so it's definitely a unique board. Um, this isn't a cookie cutter one that you see in some other amps. And you can definitely see the class AB tr uh, transistors and everything else that you normally would be seeing in a class AB and typical small class D layout right over here as well um, so you have you know you have a little bit of differences on the sides for example you know this is a larger transformer on the class AB side than what you have over here on the class D um, of course you have two on the class D section um, over here you have voltage which is uh, on the caps you have got 63 volts 
versus over here it is 50 volts um, and you got 4700 microfarad over here for the class AB 3300 microfarad uh, over here for the class uh, D section I'm sorry this is the class AB um, and of course you have your filter caps right here for the output section of the class D side so it's a very clean looking board it's you know it looks nice the build quality is solid these are not moving at all these are very firmly planted down there like I've seen with all the class D sides nothing looks uh, like cold soldered in there um, it's really really <laughs> an impressive uh, looking circuit board here for the amount of money that you're spending so very nice job here for Rockville all right nothing left to do here but to strap up the Rockville DB55 up to our trusty amp dyno and find out just how much power this budget 5 channel actually puts out is it accurately rated is it underrated is it overrated I don't know yet let's hook it up let's find out and let's do this thoughts here on the Rockville DB55 five channel amplifier uh, yeah let's just go with this amp is a gem uh, I mean honestly for what you get for this amplifier the power that you get on the sub channel um, the class AB side I mean I think it's fair 
this amp should be priced roughly about $100 more than what Rockville is selling it for. Um, I did test off camera that you're not going to see because it's kind of boring and quite frankly then I got to pay copyright on stuff. But I did uh, run it to a 2 ohm subwoofer and I ran it to a pair of, well these speakers here, um, which are Triangle Celius 202s. Um, I ran uh, the 4 channel so section bridged. So both of those were bridged to 8 ohms and it sounded awesome. Um, so very, very nice job by Rockville on this amplifier here. And again, for how much you spend, I think it's between $159 and maybe $175 right now. Um, I think it's a really, really impressive value. Uh, I know there are some of you out there who are just beyond troll-like, who are gonna be like, it's Rockville, Rockville sucks. I saw the K9 video. All right, fuck the K9 video, seriously, I get it. The K9 had its problems with the voice coil. All right. I haven't seen any problems with the K6. I haven't seen any problems with any of the other subwoofers they've had. Um, I've got a Destroyer 12 here. That thing has been a tank. Um, I've tried, I think this is my fourth Rockville amp. And three out of the four hit its certified number dead on. They've all at least been able to claim um, like dynamically what they did even that db16 did its 2000 watts dynamically and would have done the 2000 watts at one ohm if it was rated for it so the db14 the db45 and now this have all done its numbers and you can then go to the amps that big d has tested which is the m4 1500 watt amp that amp did strong numbers uh the t2 both the marine and non-marine version that big d tested did its numbers so you rockville haters out there okay we get it you didn't like the k9 but get a fucking life man there is more to it than one bad product all right and you know quite frankly if you use the k9 at a lower wattage it's not a bad product for a hundred and something dollars so again um rockville gets a lot of hate for some reason but this amp, these DB series amps have been pretty solid for me. Um, really can't wait to see uh, what they come out with next. Um, so again, we got we got pretty much dead on to the ratings, the burst sheet. Even Lucas did his job this time. So, all right, folks, that's all for me. Uh, until next time, I got a lot more amps to test. <laughs>